In the months before the United States entered World War II, Salt Lake City leaders were grappling with the black pall of smoke hanging over the city that we refer to today as the Inversion. In March of 1941, city leaders and city smoke abatement engineer William F. Butler set out to create a set of ordinances that would clear the air. As part of their comprehensive plan, the city's Smoke Control Division was born. The division, headed by city engineer Butler, was tasked with enforcing new smokeless fuel standards and ensuring heating equipment, furnaces, and boilers were optimized to be as efficient and smokeless as possible. They also outlawed the burning of leaves and trash in the city. The railroad industry was seen as the leading cause of the smoke, and they were given just six months to comply with the new rules. The Denver and Rio Grande Railroad alone spent $100,000 to comply, using new technology to improve cold starts of trains and reduce their pollution output considerably. Over the course of the next few years, much progress was made by the city to work with industry to reduce burning, help residents convert their winter heating to natural gas, and reduce pollution from city vehicles. Even the city and county building's boiler underwent a renovation to bring it up to the new standards. The Smoke Control Division did its best to help with the inversion problem until 1944, when its name was changed to the Power and Heating Division, since so much of their work was dedicated to helping residents and industry eliminate burning in their methods of heating. By 1949, city engineers estimated that they had reduced the layer of smoke over Salt Lake City by 80%. But with the ushering in of a new commuter age, automobiles and new industries undid much of the work the city did under the Smoke Control Division, making today's efforts to clear the air all the more important.